Thank you, Harriet. Good morning. Nice to have you here. A couple of uh, quick announcements as we get started today. Um, during the month of May, our mission projects are the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we have two, actually, we have the, the two Alzheimer's directed projects, and uh, that reminds me that this Wednesday morning is our monthly, and the final one for the summer months is our mission breakfast. And I hope that you'll be here. We've got representatives from Love, Inc. coming. Uh, we're going to do a thing on the Multiple Sclerosis Society, our donation, annual donation to them. Uh, we've got uh, a presentation on Operation Shoebox. And uh, we have the two uh, programs we're going to tell you more about on Wednesday morning uh, for dealing and helping Alzheimer's patients and their families. So uh, it's a really uh, good program this this Wednesday morning at 9 and also a good breakfast. The breakfast is $5. That just covers costs. And uh, we hope that you'll come out and join us. If you don't have a ticket yet, uh, you can get one on your way out uh, this morning. <clears throat> Since we have all these guests coming, we're hoping we have some of you folks there too. So, uh, Alder flowers today are given first of all by uh, Alan Candy DeGarmo in celebration of Candy's 73rd birthday. You're not 73. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Candy. Happy birthday to you. No, that's, that's left over from your last wedding gig, I think, yeah. Okay. Uh, also, uh, flowers on the altar today uh, given by Dick and Bev Green for Dick's 80th birthday. Wow. He's not 80 years old. Is Dick 80 years old? Where is Dick? Oh, you're in, the, why are you in the back? Oh, so you can get to the kitchen. Oh, yeah, I thought D D Dick wanted to get to the cake faster because it's also Sherry Zecker's birthday and she brought a delicious cake and ice cream. So they'll, they'll be like a stampede after the benediction. Right. We hope you all stay and have some cake and ice cream. So happy birthday, Candy. Happy birthday, Dick. Happy birthday to my... Uh, Hobby Lobby buddy, uh, Sherry Zecker, and uh, we hope you all stay and have some cake and ice cream afterwards and get to talk and, and meet one another. Uh, next Sunday morning is Mother's Day, and on Mother's Day it's become a little bit of a tradition to have with us uh, our, our buddy uh, Bob Stamen, uh, who does Mother's Day, Father's Day, and he's also going to be here for the 50th anniversary thing. And uh, so you don't want to miss Bob. Uh, Kevin always loves this. Go he, Bob Stamen is so sincere and so emotional about what he does and means it so much that when, when Kevin practices with him, he has to wait for Bob to stop crying before he can sing. Isn't that right? Yeah. I, it, I go through an entire box of tissues in his living room. <laughs> it's just he starts thinking about his mom. Yeah. Yeah, and then I and then I roped and he gets me going too. Yeah, and then I roped him in on Father's Day to doing the old man, which gets us all going. So, but anyway, Bob will be here next Sunday, and Billy, and uh, we'll have some beautiful music for Mother's Day. And I hope you'll come out and uh, and celebrate moms with us uh, for next week. Today is Holy Communion, and we remind you, as we always do, that our communion table is open to everyone who desires to receive the blessing of the sacrament. Uh, we don't uh, require you to show a membership card or uh, do anything special, uh, just come as Christ would have you come. I stand at the door and I knock, so just open the door and come on in. I have some good news for you. Uh, last week we talked about shelter box and we said we'd like to wrap that up and we were trying to reach a goal of one shelter box to send to uh, uh, either a war-torn area or an area that's suffered some kind of a natural catastrophe. And uh, by the end of the day and the end of the week, we have uh, surpassed that goal and we have raised over $3,000 and we're sending three, three uh, shelter boxes. And I, I, I credit that uh, 
not, not only to Wendy Weaver, who's been working on the project uh, all along, but uh, also to my buddy Ralph Cowell, who's been with uh, the uh, uh, program for quite a while, and he got up and made a little speech, and, and I, I think that, that did it. You, you, you were all afraid of Ralph. No. <laughs> so. <laughs> So anyway, we, we thank you very much for uh, helping us do that and uh, helping us help three families who will have shelter and water and all the things they need to make it through uh, a really tough time in their lives. So it's a very good thing. Um, we're starting to get reservations now are uh, coming in for the 50th anniversary uh, of my ordination, which will take place in June, on June the 10th. Uh, we have a great musical program, hors d'oeuvres at 5 o'clock, concert at 6 30. Uh, Kevin will be here. Kevin's uh, band will be here. Uh, Dennis is going to be on drums and John I think it is on yeah. bass guitar and so we'll have the, we'll have the uh, Kevin O'Connell trio here in addition to that and I'm going to miss somebody probably but we've got Billy and Billy's going to MC and we've got uh, Pinky and we've got the Skipper and uh, we have uh, Bob. Bob Stamen, and we have Ben. Dawn. Ben and Dawn Pendley's flying in from Texas uh, to play the flute. Reverend. Uh, who, who else did I miss? Scott. Oh, Scott. Yeah, Scott Moore uh, from Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, where we rented for years, uh, called, and he said, I want to sing. I want to be there. So he's going to come and join us. So it's gonna, I think we have nine, nine people on the concert list, and it's going to be a, a lot of fun. So, and Candy DeGarmo's working with a committee, and they're doing all kinds of things. So uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. If you, uh, if you, if you miss this, you're going to miss a lot of fun. So come on, come on out and, and join us on June the 10th. But the only thing you need to do is no charges for anything, but what you need to do is make a reservation because we need to m stop the reservations if we don't have enough seats. Okay? Uh, that would be that. I did mention the flowers. Um, oh, uh, we, have, we have guests. And uh, I was, I was kind of like, what? I, I haven't seen this gal since... Uh, 20 years probably since my church up in, in uh, Michigan, but uh, Sharon Jenks is right back there. Sharon's uh, visiting with us. She had a wedding in the area, so she decided to come and see if I was still as enfeebled as I was when I left. So, but anyway, she's, uh, she's here, so welcome, welcome Sharon. And, uh, I, and I see Dottie Landerman has risen from the dead. She's back there. She had a terrible fall of, about a week or so ago, and she's back. And I'm two weeks ago now, and uh, so she's back. And then some other good news, some people that were in the hospital that I really wasn't too sure how things were going to work out. I can tell you that um, um, Bob and uh, Carol uh, Brooks are very happy because Carol's back home from the hospital, hopefully this time to stay. And uh, she's doing better. She's still got some healing up to do. And uh, uh, Kathy Breitmeyer, our, our, our kitchen goddess, she is uh, doing much better. She's home and, and recuperating. And hopefully a couple weeks she'll be back with us. And uh, also, uh, you know, when I do this, I'm getting old, so I can't remember everything anymore. Um, Libby, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Libby, the one I was worried about the most. Uh, Libby had this open heart surgery stuff done and uh, a valve replaced and all kinds of things. And the doctor was not very encouraging to Gil when she was going into this and kind of indicated he wasn't sure she was going to make it. That kind of worried me, wouldn't it worry you? The doctor's not sure. Mm. So, uh, but she made it through it. She's off the respirator finally, uh, sitting up in the chair, and she's doing she's doing much much better. So, uh, our prayers are are answered there. So, we had some people that were very very sick and went through some very awful things in the last couple of weeks. So, uh, thank you for all of you who prayed, and uh, we're we're glad they're all doing uh, much much better. Um, am I forgetting anything, Miss Mary? Oh yes, naturally the head deacon is worried about. Naturally, the head deacon is worried about the deacons meeting. Um, I I almost forgot this. There's a congregational meeting. You have this. There's a congregational meeting coming up on May the 28th after church. 
uh, we are changing some of the uh, direction we were headed with our, our building project. We were talking about building a new sanctuary. Uh, there's some changes there, uh, and we'll tell you all about that when we get to the meeting on the 28th. Uh, we invite you to come out and be part of that decision. Uh, also, coming up this week, not only is there a deacon's meeting on Tuesday, but I mentioned the breakfast on Wednesday, and then the board of trustees meeting on Wednesday afternoon at uh, 3 o'clock. And um, I told you last week about the passing of our friend John Crimmins. Uh, John's um, celebration of life will be on May the 16th, Tuesday, at 10 in the morning. And it's over at Trinity Springs, which is a beautiful retirement uh, facility over uh, off of 466. It's actually on County Road 4 103. The address is on this page in case you want it. That's at 10 in the morning. And uh, the chaplain over there and I are going to share it. Billy's going to sing. Kevin's going to play. And uh, we we'll, want we'll to honor a really good man, John Crimmins, uh, who was part of our church for, for a lot of years. And, uh, and we're going we're gonna to miss him greatly. Okay. If there's nothing else, did I get it all? I feel like the 11 o'clock news <laughs> without the commercials. Well, actually, there were commercials, weren't there? So, where have you been playing this week, young man? Talking about a commercial. Uh, no, I, 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 a lot of places. Me Mezzaluna? Seventh Day Adventist Church. And yeah. <clears throat> Mezzaluna. They haven't converted you yet, have they? No. No. Okay. Because I, 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 I would be really upset by that because I too have not converted you yet. No. <laughs> This would be a major failure on my part if the Seventh-day Adventist got to you first. Yeah. Do you have a nice uh, prelude for I us? Do. And you'd probably like to play that and have me sit down and keep quiet? Yes. You, you, okay, let's do it. <laughs> Get him most. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We worship him together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Always pray to have eyes to see the best in people, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgives the bad, and a soul that never loses faith in God.
Good morning, everybody. Please join me in singing our opening hymn, The Savior is Waiting. There's your lyrics. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? waited before and now he is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door oh how he wants to come in if you'll take one step toward the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms open wide. Receive him and all of your darkness will end. Within your heart he'll abide. Time after time he has waited before. He is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. Bread of heaven, come down once more and satisfy our hunger. Cup of salvation, come down once more and quench the thirsting of our soul. We are here to worship you. We seek to encounter you. We want to find you as we gather around your table, experiencing a foretaste of that great heavenly banquet that is to come. In the name of Jesus, amen. Like the woman at the well I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never will run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasures earthly things of gold, but none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, lead me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Over the past week or so, somebody came up to me and they shared this little thought with me and I thought it was pretty good. You know how during the last several years we've been uh, waiting for this pandemic stuff to end and for things to return to normal 
And I, I can't imagine how many people have said to me, I just can't wait till things get back to normal. And this person came to me and they said, you know, I heard something. And I said, what's that? They said, normalcy is not coming back. Jesus is. Like that? Yeah. I pray for that every morning. I don't, who wants normal? If you'll recall back before pan, the pandemic hit, normal wasn't all that great anyway. So normalcy isn't coming back. Jesus is. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and righteous, yet approachable and forgiving God, we confess that we have not earned the favor you show us in our faucet. We have acted selfishly in the face of great need in the world. We have allowed our spiritual lives to languish. We have not shown the courage to heal from the past when you offer us renewal. We are grateful for your offer of presence, hope, forgiveness, and love in the elements of communion. Reach out in grace and mercy through the bread and the cup. Amen. Hear the good news. We are saved by grace, not by works. Our Savior Jesus the Christ opens access to God. This sacrament which we are about to receive illustrates and affirms that for us. In the name of Christ Jesus, we are all forgiven. Praise be to God. One Lord of all One cup of blessing which we bless And we, though many Throughout the earth Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless And we, though many Throughout the earth We are one body in this world Our blessed Savior Jesus Christ instituted the Holy Communion of his body and blood, that it might be the abiding memorial of his atoning death, the seal of his perpetual presence in the church through the Holy Spirit, the mystical representation of the sacrifice of himself upon the cross, and the pledge of his undying love for his people to the end of time. The celebration of the Lord's Supper has ever been regarded by the church as the innermost sanctuary of the whole of Christian worship. We have to do here not with signs merely, but with the realities that these signs represent. Gathering about his table, we profess our desire to be numbered among his people and to walk in his ways. Let us pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, to this your throne of grace, we place upon the altar the broken loaf, the fruit of the vine, and we ask your blessing to fall upon them. 
We also ask, Heavenly Father, that you would prepare our hearts to rightly receive them. Help us as we receive the bread, as we drink the cup, to know anew the love of Jesus Christ, which purchased this for all of us. We ask these things now in his name and for his sake. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and having blessed and broke it, said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, after supper, he took a cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament or the New Covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, for all things are now ready. The bread which we break is not to us the communion of the body of Christ. Take and eat.
cup of blessing which we bless, is it not to us the communion of the blood of Christ? Drink ye all of it. Thank you. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. This morning we have a number of prayer shawls to dedicate, so if I could have a couple of you come forward, please. As you're coming, I'll start to let you know who these are for. This first one is for Dottie Landerman, because as I mentioned earlier, she had a fall and a number of injuries from that fall. That's for Dottie. This one, this was requested by Marianne Bar Barton for Helen Osier. Osier. And uh, she's going through her second round with cancer. That's a pretty one, isn't it? This one is for uh, Adri Adriana Rines, who is Jonas's mom. Did I say it right? Ardeen Rines. Ardeen, I'm sorry. I can not read that. Um, she's 94. Yeah, she needs us because I'm going back home. Yeah, we'll say some extra prayers over this for your poor mother. Yeah, oh, so 94 years old, that's great. Let you hold that one for mom. That's a pretty one too, isn't it? And this one is for um, Lorraine Mayo, and that's your aunt? Yeah, they're 20 days apart. Really? So they're both 94, oh my gosh. Whatever they're drinking, could you get us some? <laughs> there you are. Okay, can we bring them together? Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray your blessing upon these prayer shawls, realizing there's, there's no magic in it, but there's great power in our prayer. There's great power in the Holy Spirit that goes with them. And there's wonderful power in the love of Christ that they represent. We pray for these who are going to receive them that... They would understand the blessing that comes with them, the love of this congregation, the concern of those who requested them, and may they experience your joy and presence as they touch them and as they wrap themselves in them. Allow them to feel themselves wrapped in your love, for we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Dottie's is being hand-delivered by the songbird herself. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, in a world of turmoil and upset, where so many people are filled with anger and angst, we thank you for this island of love. We thank you for this place where Christ is present. We thank you that here we find hope. We ask, Heavenly Father, for the blessing of your Holy Spirit to be upon all those things that are vexing our heart or weighing us down today, that our burdens might be lifted, that our sins and our problems might be left here at this altar, and that we might go home better than the way we came. You have never left us. You have never forsaken us. You have never allowed the evil of this world to have victory over us. We still stand. We're still here. 
we're still believing. We pray today for those that are in our hearts who are going through tough times, for those who've had major surgeries, for those who are in the hospital, for those in nursing homes, for those rehabbing at home. Be with them. Be the healing power of that Holy Spirit for them. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who've lost loved ones. We pray for the Crimmins family and for others that are on our hearts who have lost those that they love. Allow them to know, not to hope, but to know that that loved one is in a better place, that he, he or she has received that blessing of the place which Christ has prepared for them, and they are at peace. We thank you for that assurance. We thank you for that hope. We thank you for the blessings, for all that you are, the dear Father, the good God, the one who watches over us all the time. For all that you have done, we are truly grateful. And as a testimony of our faith in you, as a word of thanksgiving toward you, hear us as we pray the prayer that your son taught when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time we worship the Lord with the receiving of our morning tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us, we are grateful for the gifts, for the provision, but most of all for Christ himself. We give you thanks and we give you praise. And now we bring to your throne of grace these gifts, a small portion of the great bounty that you've given to us. 
And we ask that you would receive these gifts and dedicate them to your service, that people might know and receive the benefits and the reason that Christ came, to love, to heal, to strengthen, to forgive. But we pray these things in his name and for his sake. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, a son of man that you care for him? You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. <clears throat> Yet, at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. May God bless this reading of his holy word. We're going to sing through this twice, so... Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely in the, the presence, presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence in this place I can feel his mighty power and his grace I can hear the brush of angels wings I see glory on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place The words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. Who do you turn to when everything seems to collapse? Where do you go when trouble seems to be the overwhelming force in your life? Do you go to a family member? Do you go to a close friend? Do you run to the church and call the pastor? Do you look to... Uh, I hope not. Do you look to the government to solve your problem? <laughs> Regardless of what you've decided is your out, when you do that, you are usually going to come up short. You'll find that your friends are just having as much trouble as you are. They're going through difficulties just as you're going through difficulties, and, and they wouldn't have the answers anyway. You'll find that the church is busy paying the bills and running the missions and having the meetings and the pastors running about doing all sorts of things, not sure what direction to head next. And more than likely, 
The only answer he has is the only answer there is, and that is Jesus. The only place that you and I can go to to receive the help that we need that lasts is to the foundation stone, is to the the beginning point, is to the creator himself who was there with his father at the time of creation. Nothing was made without him being there. The only choice and the only source we have is Jesus Christ. And sometimes we need to get to the place where we have bottomed out, things are so impossible that there doesn't seem to be a way ahead, that the road is cloudy and foggy and we can't get through, blocked, until we realize that Jesus is the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to the Father but by me. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Jesus is our our way. He is our truth. He is the only way for us. I remember years ago when I was um, a parish worker, and parish worker was not assistant pastor or student pastor. It was doing all the things in the church that um, nobody else did. I was at Grace Alsace, United Church of Christ, in Reading, on the suburbs of Reading, Pennsylvania. And somebody called me one day and told me about a young man who happened to be in the paper who had shot himself in the stomach. This, this kid went through a, an awful time. It was a broken home, and he went to live with his mother, And his mother would play mind games with him to turn him on his father. And when all that reaped its own rewards, he left the mother and went to the father and moved in with his father and his new wife. And that was just as bad. And he got to the place where he just couldn't find any way out. It's mom didn't make it for me. Dad didn't make it for me. He felt like he was being moved from one school to another school, couldn't keep his friends. So he took a pistol from his father's drawer, and he went down to the inner city of Reading, to the main street of town, and and this town was built by William Penn, or William Penn's son, actually. And uh, some of the original structure or layout is still there. And he went back in this alleyway between two stores. He went back in this alleyway and he sat down on the ground. And he wept himself and he wept and he wept. And then he took that gun and he put it into his stomach and he pulled the trigger. Well, God wasn't ready for him to end that. And God wasn't ready for the victory of a broken home and and all of the things that went with it to, to end this kid's life. We'll call him Buddy. Actually, that was his name. And so I was asked to go visit with him at the hospital, and I, I went. And he was the nicest young man. This, this kid was just beside himself and didn't know what to do and, and had a breaking point, hit it, and made a mistake. Well, we talked, and I asked him if he'd like me to come back and see him again, and he did. So I went and visited him a number of times at the hospital, and I took him a book called The Cross and the Switchblade, written by David Wilkerson. And it was the story of David Wilkerson going into New York City to the gangs and the hopeless, the drug addicts, the prostitutes, the people for whom life had failed, and bringing them an answer that they never expected and weren't even looking for. He brought them Jesus Christ. He brought them faith. He brought it to tough gang members. He brought it to hardened girls who lived on the streets and worked the streets. He, he brought it to the straits in the little chapels and churches in the inner city of New York. The same answer was there for everybody. Just as that same answer is for everybody today. It is for the rich and the poor. It's for the young and the old. It's for the healthy and the sick. Jesus is the answer. Now, for some, they'll say, well, that's overly simplistic. And you'll run into the pseudo-intellectuals of this world, the college professors, etc., who'll say, well, you know, that's, that's just the, 
the inane and the stupid's answer to the world's problems, it's not really an answer at all. To which I always ask, well, then what's your answer? They don't have one. So then, who's really the stupid one? Who is really without an answer? Everyone who does not have Christ is without an answer. As long as we have 50% of the marriages in this country falling to divorce, as long as there are starving children in Africa by the thousands every day while we sit here, dozens will die while the rest of the world throws away food. As long as those things are happening, we do not have an answer better than Jesus. No matter how smart we are, no matter how high our IQs are, no matter how much money we have, no matter whether our country is a sophisticated one or a backward one, we do not have an answer better than the Savior. Well, what happened with Buddy was an amazing thing. One of the miracles, and I've seen a few, but one of the miracles that I saw in my life. We... Uh, had David Wilkerson come to the Raja Theater in Reading, Pennsylvania. And he spoke. We had a David Wilkerson Youth Crusade. I was involved in it. I helped them get it together. And, and I had a lot of fun with it and a lot of satisfaction out of doing it. And later I did it in Ohio and a number of places with Dave. And uh, Dave's brother, uh, Don, and I got to be friends. But they had an amazing turnout to this thing. I took my youth group from the Grace House of the United Church of Christ, and we filled a row and a half with our kids in the big theater. And Dave Wilkerson got up and he preached, and his sermon was not some intellectual masterpiece. It wasn't filled with uh, trying to impress people with his knowledge of Greek and Hebrew that he learned in the cemetery. I mean, seminary. <laughs> that was deliberate. Uh, it's just a sidelight, my seminary I graduated from, I was telling somebody this morning, uh, last Friday had their graduation. It was the 198th graduation of the Lancaster Theological Seminary. 198 years, isn't that amazing? And I was in that first class. <laughs> thank, you, thank, you, thank you, thank you very much. Yes, I was. Uh, or at least I feel that way since I met you. Anyway... Uh, <laughs> Well, we had, we had an amazing group of kids. So Dave Wilkerson, gave, and he's just a, was, a, was a power, he's gone now, but he was just a powerful preacher and a great guy. And uh, he preached, and they had this, the big stage. This was a concert stage. They used to put an orchestra, a big orchestra up there. They had the uh, celebrities from all over the place come and, and do concerts there. He filled that stage. I mean, it, this would be, would be, be dwarfed by the size of that stage. He filled that stage with kids. I mean, they were all the way to the back and all the way to the front, up against each other, filled that stage with kids who came because he said, if you need Jesus Christ in your life, all you need to do is get out of your seat and come forward. Now some people say, well, that's a Baptist thing, or, you know, that's an altar call, and I don't believe in that. But you know, most people don't believe in that, don't believe much else either, so who cares? But anyway, they, would, they filled that front on that stage because they wanted something. They weren't putting on, they weren't trying to impress anybody, they were looking for an answer, and they were hoping that Jesus was that answer. And so Dave Wilkerson was out in front, and he didn't know any of these kids. He didn't know my kids. You know, he, he had no idea about Buddy. He'd never heard that story. He blew into town on his bus. We got the thing organized that afternoon, and he went on that night and did his uh, evangelistic thing. Well, he was standing up there like this with all of these kids, several hundred kids, and he was so quiet for a minute and then all of a sudden, he just started going like this, and he started walking back through these kids like this. And the next thing you know, he's pulling this kid out with him. And, of course, you know who it is. It's Buddy. And he says to him, you know, you've gone through a tough time in your life. And Buddy says, yeah, I, I tried to kill myself. Well, you could have heard a dime fall. And... If there was one kid on that stage that God would have led Wilkerson to that could have brought the house down, brought the Holy Spirit down, it was that young man. 
If Jesus could have led him to anybody to talk to, it was him. And because of that, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. And Wilkerson got down on the, on the stage with him and prayed with him. And he wasn't grandstanding. And if that's people's attitude, then that's probably why Jesus ain't doing much for you. And he prayed with him, and it turned his life around. Buddy, Buddy went on to get involved in church. He went on to, to do some good things with his life, and it just turned him around. He was able to get his family situation to the place where it wasn't perfect, but at least it became tolerable, and he was able to love his mom and love his dad and not let them play games with him. It was a revolution in his life, a Jesus revolution in his life. When we're going through times of testing and trouble, whether it's a, a personal financial problem or an illness or a breakup in a relationship, the answer is Christ. The answer is a spiritual one. If you ask what's wrong with America today, what's wrong with this world of ours, is it financial? Is it a political problem? No. No. It's a spiritual problem. It's a spiritual problem. It's a problem of hate when we need love, which is a spiritual answer. It's a problem of disrespect when we need to respect and love one another, regardless of our differences and idiosyncrasies. Love, respect, honor one another. Do what Christ has, has called us to do, and we break down the walls, and we, we reestablish relationships, and we feed the hungry, and we make a difference in people's lives. That's what we set out to do, isn't it? And that's what we've tried to do for those around us. There are two tips I have for you quickly this morning that are about anchoring yourself in Christ. First of all, don't focus on the theological stuff. Don't focus on the stuff that separates us. Well, I'm a Methodist, and I'm a, a Lutheran, and I'm a Presbyterian, and I'm a Foursquare, and I'm a Pentecostal, and I'm an Assembly of God, and I'm a Roman Catholic, and I'm a, I'm a Polish National Catholic, and I'm a Greek Orthodox, and I'm a Russian Orthodox. And if you ask half the people, no, not half, you ask 90% of the people sitting in the pews of all those different brands why they're different than anybody else, they don't have a clue. And did you ever wonder why we name churches after dead people? Martin Luther, well, they didn't name it after the Wesleys, but they call it Methodism, which was their thing. When, when we have Jesus to name it after, you know, we're congregationalists. What is that? Right? I mean, just think about it for a minute. Most people don't know what congregationalism is. That's why they don't even give this a try. Mary can tell you, they call on the phone, is this the congressional church? <laughs> if I answer the phone, I always tell them, no, we don't want anything to do with Congress. Why? Why don't we lift up the one that we're supposed to lift up? Why do you go to the Bible and why do people that write doctrinal statements go to the Bible and they pull out little thoughts from Paul, the apostle, or, or they pull out something that, that Peter said and they turn it into a divisive doctrine in the church? Instead, we ought to read the, the red letter stuff. If you get one of those Bibles where the words of Christ are in red and you stick to those red letter things, you're going to find there's lots less divisiveness and anger and hatred if you just stick to what Jesus taught, if you just stick to Christ. So concentrate on his promises. Read what he said. Try to live the way he asked you to live and you'll be a lot further along and succeed a lot better. Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. 
He follows that by saying, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, and I, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Notice he didn't say, learn from the doctrinal statement, learn from the creedal statement, learn from what other people say that their church believes that yours doesn't. Did you ever, did you ever notice that in the paper? Get the Saturday Daily Sun and look at it and see you know, what the churches say. Oh, you know, we, we, we believe the Bible like the other churches don't. We're friendly like the other churches aren't. You know, the things that they're saying they are, well, aren't all churches those things? And if they're not, they probably ought to close. A lot of them are. Secondly, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. It is an absolute necessity that you make a commitment. You know, people today <clears throat> think that somehow or another by not getting married or coming to church and, and making a commitment, somehow or another that lets it free and easy and it's not so bad if it doesn't work. Well, the reason it doesn't work is because you didn't make the commitment. Nothing works without signing the contract. Nothing, nothing locks you into a relationship and commits you to doing the right things and, and sacrificing for one another. Like standing in front of God Almighty and saying, I will, and I do. Nothing is uh, going to change in your relationship unless you are 100% committed to that relationship. As long as it's all about you, it's not going to work. If it's all about her or him, it's not going to work. But if it's all about Christ, being the head of your relationship, being the guide and the love provider in your life together, then great things will happen. I remember when I was at Messiah College, I started the college radio station along with the Democratic Club. Yes, I started the Democratic Club. Three people had a heart attack in the back row. <laughs> when I was there, we started this uh, radio station. It was closed circuit. It went through all the wires all around the campus and all the dormitories and then all the buildings down in the, uh, the cafe and all that stuff. And uh, when we started, we were given a list of rules. We weren't allowed to play. We, it was a Christian college, and at that time, back in the dark ages, we weren't allowed to play rock and roll music unless we had it approved. Well, you, we didn't have time to do that, so uh, we came up with a new plan, another one of my little things. What we did was we would give a commentary about the song we were about to play and we were able to play almost every song there was because every song there was spoke in one way or another to good and evil, to love and, and concern for relationships and so forth. Uh, even the worst of rock music would have something in it that we could highlight after we played it that had a Christian content to it. And so I've always been able to listen to secular music and hear God in it. I, you know, that's uh, an amazing thing that, that if you listen with your heart, you can, you can find Jesus just about everywhere. You, go to, you can go to a Baptist church, you can go to a Pentecostal church, you can go to a Christian church, you can go to a, even a congregational church, and you can find God there. You can find him, and Christ is always present. Well, while we were there doing those things, and I used to do uh, a radio show and... Uh, uh, I'd play music and I'd talk about what, what the song meant and I'd find Christ in the music and so on. One of my favorite songs was by the Bellamy Brothers. It was called Let Your Love Flow. I don't know if you remember it or not. Some of you are too old and some of you are too young, but maybe you'll remember it on the way home. The lyrics went like this. There's a reason for the sunshine sky. There's a reason why I'm feeling so high. Must be the season when the love light shines all around us. Now, if you can't hear Jesus in that, you need to go back to the book and read it again. So let that feeling grab you deep inside and send you reeling where your love can't hide and then go stealing through the moonlight night with your lover, Jesus. 
Just let your love flow like a mountain stream and let your love grow with the smallest of dreams and let your love show and you'll know what I mean. It's the season. Let your love fly like a bird on the wing. Let your love bind you to all living things and let your love shine and you'll know what I mean. That's the season. If you'll listen for him, you will find him just about everywhere. And if you'll watch for him, you'll see him just about everywhere. You'll begin to see him in your grandchild's face. You'll feel him in the touch of your wife or your husband's hand. You'll hear his voice in their voice. You'll hear his call in everything around you, in the beauty of creation, in the power of a storm, in the wonder of a crystal blue sky here in Florida. He is everywhere, everywhere. Philippians says, And may God supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. His riches are poured out upon you. His riches are there for, for you to receive. You can explain it away. You can choose to live in your miserable little intellectual world of your own creation. Or you can realize that wherever you are, in whatever state you find yourself, there he is also. He is there, and he is all you need. I put on the, uh, on the bulletin this morning this little thing that I like. You never learn that Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have. So for, for Buddy... For those people in that little church in uh, Newburgh, out along the Pennsylvania Turnpike, pike with the with the odd house for or the privy to go to the bathroom in, in those gymnasium rallies we used to have, in those David Wilkerson crusades like the one at the Raja Theater, in the churches like the Church on the Square here in the villages or this one. If there's anyone who will, who will hear with their heart, let those who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. There is an answer. There is an answer. And that's why it says outside the door, it's all about him. So if it ain't working for you, it's not his fault. If it isn't happening for you, it isn't because he isn't talking. It's because you're not listening. Heavenly Father, it is all about your Son. Jesus is the answer, as simplistic as that might be. When we're sick, he is our source. When we're lonely, he is our companion. When we're hurting, he is our healing balm. When we don't know which way to turn, he is our GPS. Help us, Heavenly Father to understand that Jesus Christ is all we need. In his name we pray. Amen. When I first started to sing for the Congregational Church, it was down in Lady Lake in a big old rickety building behind the, well, uh, what's now the Methodist Church. And when they called me to come and sing for them, and this is a lot of years ago, I said, I don't know any Christian music. Because I was brought up in a Catholic church, and I knew Catholic hymns from the Catholic hymnal. That's what I knew. And, and I was told, well, just sing anything, you know, secular that could be construed as religious. So if you think about it, Bridge Over Troubled Water, I Believe, and songs like that are secular, but they certainly have an element of Jesus in them. And so that's what I started out singing. Well, over the years, my pastor back here has assigned me wonderful, wonderful hymns. And uh, I know so many more now than I did then. So thank you for that. And here's one of them. And you get to sing it too. So join me for I Believe in a Hill Called Mount Calvary. There are things as we travel 
this earth's shifting sands that transcend all the reason of man. But the thing that matters the most in this world, they can never be believe that the Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely, a new life is mine. That is why by the cross I will stay. that old rugged cross I believe that this life with its great mysteries surely someday will come to an end but faith will conquer the darkness and death Thank you, Harriet. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, all of you, for coming out, and thanks for watching us today. We appreciate that. Don't forget, if you want tickets to the breakfast, get them before you leave today. And um, we hope that you have a good week. The presence of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. Wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do, there God is. Thanks so much.